hello students uh, in this video i'll be discussing about the methods of fluoridation and defluoridation which are used for treating water which contains excess amount of fluoride or the water which doesn't contain fluoride at all so usually the addition of fluoride to the water is called as fluoridation and let me recollect few things here when you are studying when you are studying the chemical characteristics of water there you are learnt that the fluoride concentration uh, should be in the range of 0.8 to 1 mg per liter if it is less then also it is harmful and if it is more than 1 mg per liter then also it is harmful so it is called as the double edged sword so what happens if it is less it leads to dental caries in children which is usually confused to decaying of teeth uh, and also it may lead to the calcination problems in children that is in the calcinating children in the sense uh, the children with the age below 13 years of age wherein the calcination of the bones or the teeth is going on there if they are deprived of uh, fluoride content in water then it leads to Uh, the problems such as dental caries and uh, and various such things so in order to uh, take care of this if the fluoride is less then what uh, what has to be done is fluoride has to be added to the water and this process of adding fluoride compounds is called fluoridation and the compounds which are used for fluoridation are sodium fluoride sodium silico fluoride and hydro fluosilicic acid etc these are being added to the water in varying amounts so as to maintain the fluoride concentration up to about 1 mg per liter not more than that and usually the dose of fluoride should be carefully worked out here as the excess fluoride if it is if it exceeds 1.5 to 2 then it is very much harmful again which leads to discoloration of teeth which is called as mottling of teeth Mm, that is the color of the teeth becomes yellowish there will be yellow scaling on the teeth which is uh, regarded as mottling of teeth and it may even cause skeletal abnormalities that is very much similar to uh, osteoporosis fluorosis skeletal fluorosis will happen that is the bones disintegrate they become weak and people people uh, uh, suffering from this may become uh, hunchback and all that okay coming to the uh, next uh, technique which is defluoridation it is nothing but removing excess fluoride which is present in the water mm, to what amount excess it is uh, we know that it should be well within the limit that is from 1 to 1.5 ppm it's okay but beyond that if it is there then it leads to problem and hence it has to be removed so what are the various uh, defluoridation methods there are three methods that is using activated alumina bone char is being used and the third one is the nalgonda technique now here in activated alumina or the bone char method uh, what happens is it contains the Uh, um, granular bed of this activated alumina or bone char through which the water containing fluoride is being passed it percolates through these insoluble gra granular beds and here the fluoride which is present in the water gets absorbed by these insoluble granular beds and if it gets saturated that is after passing the water uh, when Uh, when several such cycles have been complete, completed what happens this granular beds containing bone char or the activated alumina they get saturated and these can be generated with 1% solution of caustic soda in case of bone char it is being regenerated by treating it with 1% solution of caustic soda and in case of activated alumina it is regenerated by back washing it with the caustic soda and then uh, coming to the nalgonda technique how it has been done as uh, it is uh, very much specifically used in the rural areas rural parts of india for treating the ground water containing fluoride 
and this technique uses aluminum salts uh, alum to remove fluoride in the water first what has been done is the raw water is mixed with the adequate amount of lime or sodium carbonate and after that it is followed with the addition of alum and water is stirred slowly for about 10 minutes and then it is allowed to settle for nearly one hour when it is allowed to settle for one hour what happens the uh, flocks which are being formed uh, by mixing flocculation is been done and the flocks which are being formed they get precipitated out and they uh, settle at the bottom and the clear supernatant which contains permissible amount of fluoride is withdrawn for the use uh, so this method is more simpler and economical as it employs readily available chemicals and also it helps in removal of color odor turbidity bacteria and organic contaminants from raw supplies so this is regarding fluoridation and defluoridation thank you